Again, I've come across a set of questions for those that accept evolution as the explanation for the diversity of life on this planet. Let's see what they have to ask. Here are three questions to ask someone who believes in evolution. How do you define evolution? Proving evolution true is done by changing the definition in the middle of the conversation. If you define evolution correctly, it's game over. The term evolution itself simply means change, or change over time. That's why we can have several forms of evolution. Stellar evolution describes how stars change. Political and social views can evolve. Or we can even have an evolution of technological innovations. But, when people talk about evolution without any qualifiers, they generally mean biological change in species via mutation and natural selection, since that's what the term evolution is most associated with, and what I believe you are looking for. Now, some specifics of evolutionary theory have themselves changed, or evolved, since Darwin's works. In fact, while Darwin discussed observed changes and mutations in species, he wasn't aware of the mechanism of those changes. It was a contemporary of his, Gregor Mendel, whose work breeding organisms like peas and fruit flies helped discover the idea of allele gene forms, aiding the science of evolution. And that wasn't the last of it. Evolutionary theory has continually changed over time, as our understanding of biology has increased. But Darwin's main idea, that slight variations can occur between generations, and if those variations are beneficial, they'll be passed on, eventually building up, resulting in new species, has been consistent. In fact, Darwin himself would probably not recognize, or at least would need to be dramatically educated on evolutionary theory itself, if he found himself living in our time, since it has changed so much. And I like to think he would be impressed by that. Darwin took a long time refining his work before publishing Origin of Species to try to get it as right as possible with what he had observed at the time. So I think he would be happy that more evidence out there has both strengthened and supported his underlying premise. That's what science does. It refines our understanding of the world as new evidence is brought forward, changing, modifying, or even discarding past understanding as new evidence is discovered. But, to your original question, when someone mentions evolution, my first thought is a change in species brought about by mutations and driven by natural selection, where the organisms with adaptations that help it survive and thrive are more likely to survive and thrive, passing on those adaptations. Has evolution ever been observed as it happened? No, never. To ask if evolution has been observed is a dishonest question. Technically, we have never observed speciation. That is, a species give birth to a completely different species. If we did, that would actually disprove our understanding of evolutionary theory, and we'd have to start back at the drawing board to try to figure out the explanation for the diversity of life on this planet. But, asking if we have observed evolution as it happened is the same as asking if we can be shown a picture of a person running a complete marathon. Since a marathon is such a long and grueling race, the entire thing can't be shown in one photograph. Similarly, since evolution is the gradual buildup of genetic changes in a group of organisms over such a long period of time, we can't point to a single organism and say, boom, this is where the evolution happened. But we can use our understanding of how genetics change slightly between generations and our observations of the fossil record to help us track how one species changed over time into a completely different species. How did life originate? Life originating from non-life was proven impossible over 150 years ago. Pasteur showed in his work that complex life like bacteria does not spontaneously develop, or at least never developed during his experiments. But that doesn't mean that simple, self-replicating molecules can't form. We're still looking and have some good leads on how they might develop based on dissipating excess heat, which looks to be a step in the right direction. Again, this is all theoretical, but all science starts with a hypothesis and builds from there. And I have said it before, but even if we don't know how life started, that doesn't mean we can't understand how it changes. If a child gets hit with a snowball, you can't tell them, well, you can't say you got hit if you don't know how snowflakes form. Even without knowing how snow came about, you can still have evidence of that snowball existing. In the same way, even if we don't know how life began, we can still understand how it changes. Evolutionists have no reasonable answers. Well, I like to think that I gave reasonable answers to your questions, but if anybody watching this thinks I was being unreasonable, please let me know.